Happy Nation. Welcome back to the Team to Beat Miami Heat podcast. My name is Amir. Got Trent on here joining me today. What's up, Trent? What's going on, guys? How's your day going? Go Heat Nation. Not bad, man. Not bad. So everybody, you guys know Trent from the Miami Heat roundtables that we've been doing. And as you know, last week I got together with Ernest. We started our own show. And I told you and Ernest said the same thing. We're going to start creating side shows with folks from the roundtable. So Trent and I wanted to start our own series. I think we're going to call it Heat Em Up. Um, and so this is episode one of Heat Em Up. And we're excited to, to get together and talk. So next week or this week, uh, you, you guys can find episode two on, on Trent's channel. So you can find him at Miami Heat Network. So don't forget to subscribe to his channel and my channel as well. So for the first episode, I want to talk about the play-in. The Miami Heat, once again, find ourselves back in the playing tournament. We finished 46 and 36. I think they did a little bit better than what you thought. I think you kept mentioning in other videos the Heat are going to go 7-7 seven and seven in their final 14, but I think we had two more wins this year than last year. Who care? At this point, who gives a shit? Because we're the eighth seed, and we are playing the Sixers on Wednesday on the road. Going to be a tough, tough matchup. Joel Embiid's been back. And he's played five games. And in those five games, he's been averaging 35, 11, and 5. Like, hasn't missed a beat, man. So let's talk a little bit about the game. Give the audience a little preview and just thoughts on the game, man. Do the Miami Heat have a chance to win an important game? We know they failed every time we had a chance last week in the regular season to avoid the play-in. But we're here now. What are your thoughts on this game? Do we even have a shot, man? Or are the... Sixers just too much of a juggernaut at this point. Of course we have a shot. Um, we're the Miami Heat. We're always going to have a shot. Um, I'm waiting for that time of the year. You know, Jimmy Butler's talking. I'm I'm confident in Jimmy what he's going to do. Um, this playing this Wednesday can't wait. And let's not forget, man, we finished off our last 10 games 7-3. and three, Two game win streak. I, I get it. It was against two bad teams. Oh, Toronto Raptors and Toronto Raptors. Um, but Back-to-back blowouts is something that we're not really used to. So I'm proud of that. And um, going to the Sixers, though, it's going to be a tough matchup. They're on an eight-game win streak. Eight-game win streak, eight and two in their last ten. Um, they're home, which they're better at home. They're 25 and 16 at home. And um, I'm a little bit more confident that the Heat is actually away because Jimmy said it himself that, um, you know, when we get home, we get a little bit more comfortable. Away, the Miami Heat actually play better. They're 24 and 17 away. And the Miami Heat at home are 22 and 19. So it's definitely going to be a tough battle. I think we're the underdogs heading into this game, as we should. I definitely think we need to throw DeLon right out there to slow down at least Tyrese Maxey because Tyrese Maxey gets the easiest buckets. And um, if they both go off, it's going to be real, real slow. You cannot have Tyrese Maxey and Joel going off and Kelly Oubre and Buddy Hill because it'll be a long, long night. Now, obviously... Um, the best option for us is to win this game because then you know who we play? We play the New York Knicks in the mm -hmm. first round. Um, I've been saying for a while now that they are threats, but no more Julius Randle. It's unfortunate that he's out for the season, but he's no longer there. And we all seen what we did to Jalen Brunson. Um, we frustrated him. You know, we made him struggle. His field goal percentage was horrendous. So if we take out their best player, there's a way we can easily win the series. We beat them last year. I know this team is not the same as last year. Um, and so is the Knicks. The Knicks are had 50 wins this year. But just think about it. The Miami Heat probably played not the greatest regular season, missed several starting lineups and stuff like that. And we have four less wins than the Knicks, which they traded for OG and Anobi. They 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 added Dante. They they added a lot of new pieces over to that team. So we should be fine. We also got the coaching advantage with um Coach Spo, even though he has been questionable this year. But his exit O's in the playoffs are definitely gonna probably stand out compared to these other coaches. Now, Tom Thibodeau is not a bad coach, but, um, yeah, so that's kind of getting a little bit ahead. Now, Bear, if we do lose this game, we have to play the winner of the 9-10, which is Atlanta Hawks and Chicago Bulls. I think we should win that series. I think we're in the playoffs no matter what, right? Who do you think wins that game real quick, 9-10? Yeah, um, man, that's, that's an interesting one because um, these teams – I, got, I always get confused. We beat the Bulls. We lost to the Hawks. Which one is it? You mean last year? Yeah, last year. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we were the seventh seed, and we yeah. lost to the Hawks, Hawks and, and then we beat the Bulls at home barely, and so that's yeah. that's why we got the eighth seed, even though we yeah. were technically the seventh last year. So, so it kind of reminds me of a lot of last year, if you want to like think about it, right? Because now if we do somehow lose this game, we're gonna have to see one of these teams, you know. And so who I'm gonna go with? Trey Young is back, um, but I'm gonna roll with the Bulls. I'm gonna roll with that Bulls team, and um, I think. If we do lose, we play the Bulls, and I think it's going to be a battle. Don't don't. Get, it's not going to be easy win. I think the Bulls will be a battle, um, but we have Jimmy Butler, so and Tyler has been playing better. Um, so yeah, and I, and if we get the eighth seed, then you know, it is what it is. Because guess what, we put ourselves in this position. Game fifty four matters as much as game eighty two. Game twelve matters as much as game eighty two because there's games where Jimmy Butler and the team are fooling and losing and stuff like that. But think about it, Mayor. One game, one game literally changes this whole thing. And you know what that one game is? The Washington Wizards game. I'm not even talking about the Pacers. I'm not talking about the 76ers because we should never have been put in that position to win those games. We over here losing to the Wizards. We're losing to teams that we shouldn't have lost to. We would never been in this position. So at home um, too. Yeah. So we just need to lock in. I am a little bit concerned though. I will say I'm concerned about Terry Rozier. Because a neck injury should not be keeping you out for this long. And now he's getting MRIs on it, right? I'm just thinking he slept on his neck wrong. I'm thinking, okay, cool, he missed one game. Not that. He has been missing a couple more games. So now that we got a little bit more update on him, it is interesting. And then also Duncan. I don't know if we get Duncan back in these playing games. So those are two concerns. But we still have Jimmy. We still have Bam. We still have Tyler. And we still have to perform. Injuries, injuries, injuries. The biggest damn excuse. And to your point, though, yes, we're one of the most injured teams. And that's one of our big excuses. But all it took was one or two games where Jimmy tried harder, where Jimmy, Bam, and Tyler played better together, or Bam needed to step up. Like, it's not just Jimmy, but it's on Bam. It's on Tyler. When healthy, when healthy, this team still sucked offensively. We are still like 21st uh, in offensive rating, bottom 10, which is not good enough. That's our Achilles heel outside of injuries. So they need to clean that up too. So like all it would have taken is a better effort and just better shooting, more efficiency in any game. You didn't mention Memphis. That was like the most, one of the most egregious losses ever. I guess they're probably a little better than Wizards, but they didn't have Marcus Smart, Brandon Clark, they didn't have Desmond Bain, John Morant. That's even more embarrassing because the Wizards still had pool. They still yeah. had Kuzma at least. So I think like that's the most recent embarrassing loss two weeks ago. But like a few months ago, we lost to the Grizzlies, dude. But either way, um, so yeah, you think we I think the Bulls come through as well. Um, I, I just trust DeMar um more so than Trey Young. Even though DeJounte, man, that 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 boy's bad, dude. Like he was busting up the Celtics in the regular season. Like he's capable of of being clutch. So who the hell knows? But on paper, we should be either of those teams. I exactly. rather play Atlanta, the, Atlanta though, um, because I don't want to deal with again Demar, veteran, clutch, and Caruso. Man, that boy can fucking defend, dude. So like that guy's a pest, and I don't want to see him because that guy that guy's got heat culture, you know, in his blood too. So. The Hawks are soft. They're hurt. What's his name? Jalen Johnson's out, and other players have been in and out of their lineup. So I'd rather play them. But either way, um, against the the Sixers, you mentioned our best two, Jimmy and Bam. They need to step up and play on a similar or better level than Maxi and Embiid, because otherwise we're toast at this point. So, yep. what are your thoughts on Embiid? Do you think he's do you think he's okay? Because I know he sat out the last game of the season. Do you think he'll be ready to go? And, like, how do we stop him and Maxi? I think you mentioned Wright giving him more time on Maxi, But, like, how do we stop the combo? Because they remind me of, like, a Joker and Murray kind of duo, right, in the East. So what are your yeah. thoughts on stopping them? Um, You can't stop Joel. Um, you, can, Fair. you can't stop him. Um, what's it called? And it's unfortunate that Kevin Love is hurt. Let's not forget, he just got hurt. Um, so that's another body that you do throw at him, and that's a body where, you know, if we do play some small ball, if that was the case, you can kind of spread out Joel to get to the perimeter, and that gives opening lanes for Tyler, Jimmy, 
um, and all these other players on our team. So we got to see what's going to happen with that. But I don't really think you could stop Joel because Joel is drawing fouls every five seconds. He knows how to get the fouls. He knows how to get the, the ref to blow the whistle. And um, and if we get Bam in foul trouble, obviously going to put Bam on him. It's going to be a long, long night because you're going to throw Thomas Bryant at him. You might throw Jaime. It's just not a good look. We don't have the personnel to match up with Joel. Now, we do have the personnel to slow down Tyrese Maxey. So that's the thing about, and it hasn't happened because Tyrese Maxey continues to destroy us. But I think when it comes to these moments, I think um, Pat, not Pat Riley, Spo is going to be like, you know what? Jimmy, if you got to guard him. DeLon, if you got to guard him. They're just going to pay with Heisman if you got to guard him. Kayla Martin, continue yeah. to keep throwing bodies at Tyrese Maxey and frustrate him a little bit. If we could frust frustrate Jalen Brunson, we can definitely frustrate um, Tyrese Maxey. So I think that's my hope. You let Joel do whatever he got to do. If he got to score 40, he got to score 40. But if the others are not doing their job, we should be fine. We need a big night from Jimmy. We need 20 free throws attempts from Jimmy. And we need Bam to at least take two threes and give me a 20 and 10. That's all I'm asking. But I need Jimmy to give me 25, maybe even 30. If it's going to be that type of close, give me 30 points. I need 25, 20 from, you know, Tyler and Bam. We should be fine. I don't know if we're going to have Terry. I doubt it. But we, we need to win this game. Simple as that. We have a favorable matchup against the Knicks. And um, we should go from there. Yeah, man. Who do you think? So outside of the big three. So we're hoping, to your point, Jimmy, give us like, give me like 25. Bam, give me like 18 and 10. Tyler, give us like 18 and whatever, five and five you're averaging. Outside of those, who, which role player do you think needs to be the X factor? in order to win this game? It's interesting because... One, yeah. What's the number one X factor, do you think? They're all hurt. Duncan yeah. and Terry. Exactly. Duncan, yeah, you, so Duncan, Terry, and Love are all hurt. Those are our main guys. So Outside of them, obviously. Exactly, of course. So no excuses. We got to go out there. We got to look at Jaime. Jaime looked pretty good finishing the season off. I like that. Hopefully his body's good enough. We might have to look at Jovic. Haywood Smith. Those are the guys that we're going to have to rely on um, to consistently be that X factor. I think it could definitely be Haywood because Haywood has been pretty good this year, especially if he can slow down Maxi and continue to hit th five threes, four threes in that game. That's going to be the X factor alone right there. That's um, game. That's game. If he, if he hits three to four threes yeah. and locks down, like that's game right there. That's all we really need. Um, and like I said, Heat Nation, all the guys that could be the X factors are all hurt. So, um, Duncan's probably not going to play Terry questionable love questionable arm contusion. So we have to go, go back to our depth. So, and if you want to talk about an X factor that no one's going to talk about that could potentially play a factor, Thomas Bryant. So yeah, maybe in those hack a shack, he's not going to hack a MB though, but maybe yeah. that. who knows though. He, 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 he showed up near the end of the season. He looked pretty good. So he's always got that energy. I mean, but his defense is just so bad. Yeah, it sucks. Like Embiid is going to like cook him. Even Paul Reed can make him look bad, you know, can make Thomas Bryant look bad. That's the biggest issue with him is obviously his defense, but he has that tenacity and like, he's that type of dude that he's like, when I get minutes, like I'm going to go yeah, hard as hell, which is good. But before we, uh, before we hop off, uh, give me your prediction, man. Who wins this game on, on Wednesday? Give me a score. Um, I gave a prediction in my last video. Uh, I forgot the score I said, but I said, I think the Heat are going to win. I picked it like 109 to 103 or 104 or something like that. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think Heat win um, in, a, in, a, in a tough one. I think it's going to be like minimum hundreds, 94 to 100 Heat win. I like it. I mean, if we're going to be a serious team, if we want to avoid the Boston Celtics, which we have to do, because if we yeah. play the Knicks, then the second round, I think, is the winner of the Bucks and Pacers. Very well. Oh, yeah. Right? And then we play the, the Celtics in the East yes. Finals. So it could be that same path and story, just a reverse order of playing the Knicks first versus the, the Bucks. But yeah. we have an easier path. And if we lose this game, it might be all she wrote. Like, it might be a wrap in the first round. Like, we could compete. Maybe we can take it to six. Maybe we can even beat them. But after – I mean, I don't want to play them first. Some people think that's a good idea. I've seen in my comments, 
shout out to Solrak Blonde. He was saying, hey, maybe it's not a bad thing. Worst case scenario we lose is we play Boston when Jimmy's healthy. Because that was kind of funny. He's like, Jimmy typically kind of gets older and tired. He's older. He gets, you know, tired, broken down by trying to get far. So he could be right. But F that, man. I don't want to play the Celtics in the first round. Like, I'm not ready for I, I want to see more Heat basketball. I want to see them get hot, hopefully. I want to see Jimmy, Himmy, playoff Butler yeah. activated and see if that's still possible. But, all right, I'm happy. I'm happy you predicted that. I thought for sure you would be like, we're going to get our ass beat. But. It's the playoffs, baby. Playoffs tell. That's what Pat Riley always says. So we'll see, man. Big game coming up. Thanks for watching the first episode of the Heat 'em Up show. So I guess we'll probably get back together maybe post game on Wednesday afterwards or, or Thursday. We'll figure it out. But episode one on my channel, episode two is going to be on Trent's channel. So looking forward to it. Thanks a lot, man. And don't forget, subscribe to my channel and then go to Trent's channel. I'll put a link to his channel in the uh, description. So Miami Heat Network. Thanks a lot, Trent. Good night. Peace.